So here is the state of the tactical marines from our last heresy themed video. Uh, there's a link to that up here. Now as you can see we've painted the armour, added some decals and now we just have to finish them off in one video. Yeah, wish me luck. Now this project feels like it's been going on forever. I honestly completely underestimated how long it would take to paint 40 tactical marines, even in factory line style. But we got through it, and here's how it was done. Let's jump in. So the first step to finishing these marines is to add some pin washers. Pin washers work best over a gloss coat, so I've actually used some Vallejo gloss varnish on these. You can see just how shiny it is on that backpack. I'm going to assume this is glossy enough. Now Henry over at Cult of Paint used this Abteilum 502 smoke for his pin wash and as he's an expert I figured I would attempt the same thing as his turned out very nice. Also I actually really like the packaging of these. They look very premium, they're lovely. Oh it's an oil paint by the way, but I do think they do acrylics too. Now to thin our oil into a wash we need a thinner and in this case it's Windsor and Newton Sands Odor thinners. I think Sands Odor means no smell as it hardly has any smell to it at all. Sansador might be the correct pronunciation though and that's what I hear everyone else call it. Now there are a million different types of thinner that you can use for your oils. I specifically went out to buy the Sansador thinners, as I hate the smell of thinners and I only have a small room. And the last thing we want is Mrs Snakeworks getting angry. When making an oil wash you need something to put it in, so I took a little stroll up to the range and bought these little metal tins. I feel they will work quite well as they have lids, so I can store my washes indefinitely. Oh, and as they're metal, it won't stick to the sides or anything. Wonderful. Uh, they also only cost a quid or two, so that's a bargain. The first thing I did to make the pin wash is squeeze a tiny amount of the oil paint into the middle of the tin. I've hardly any experience with making pin washes, so if this is too little or too much, we'll be finding out in a moment. It looks about right to me though, so let's crack on. Then using a pipette, also from the range no less, I added some thinner to the oil paint. I also added some to an empty pot to be my brush cleaning pot. The top men recommend this as well so it must be right, right? Now for some reason I've always been a little bit scared of pin washing. It feels like some sort of routine shift or something. It's sort of hard to force myself into that way of thinking. Is it just me? Does anyone else feel that way? So then obviously we need to mix the thinners in with the oil paint to make a wash. I don't think there's an exact ratio as apparently it seems to depend on your paint quality. I'm sure some will thin down a lot easier than others. I say I'm sure but really I'm just assuming. So here's my wash consistency. Looking back at this footage maybe it's still a little thick I did have some issues down the line, but we will get to those later. If there are any experts out there, then please let me know. What do you think? Is it too thin or too thick? Let's move on. I then applied the pin wash to all the recesses on the Marines. This step took rather a long time on 40 tactical Marines, I can tell you, and I don't think I ever want to do this combination ever again, that's for sure. Either a different wash method or less miniatures at a time, I think. Now obviously it would seem that some techniques are much more suitable for speed over quality, and vice versa. I want to know if people ever use pin washers on big batches of miniatures, or is it just a few individuals here and there? I guess a commissioned painter might use the old pin wash on a big batch. But as for general hobbying, I'm not sure. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that one. There's a bit of fluff hanging from my roof. Roof? Hat. 
Now here's the results of that pin wash. I think it's come out rather well, to be honest. It wasn't very difficult to do, and the varnish prevented me wiping off all that delicate white paint layer, which has also happened before. However, after a few marines, I felt there wasn't enough contrast, and bumping up the oil to thinner ratio just made it even harder to apply, so I actually moved on to something else. Let's take a little look. Now I had some of this Tamiya panel line accent colour from a while back that I forgot about. I'm going to see if this is easier to apply or looks any better. I know it's all subjective when it comes to aesthetics, so please bear that in mind. And oh my word is it better. It's better in every way. It's the perfect consistency. It's a lovely colour, exactly what I wanted. And it even has the perfect sized applicator for Marines. Little brush in the tip. I guess it's better as it's literally what we tried to make before, but already made by experts. So I can't recommend this stuff enough. Here's a little link to some if you want some for yourself. Now going forward, I don't think I'll ever bother with making my own pin wash solution again. Unless it's a really sort of thick, grimy look I'm going for anyway. I cannot stress enough just how much better the pre-made Tamiya panel liner was than the homemade oil wash. It was a joy to use. So after a fair amount of time, we managed to get all the pin washes done. I actually think I achieved this in one sitting, which I am very proud of. I feel it was only possible by having some good videos on in the background. Again, I was using the painting phase. Thank you very much guys, you saved my sanity there. Here's a little link to them, if you don't know who I mean. Now to seal in the pin washers and remove that gloss effect, we need to mat them back down. Again, there's a million different matte varnishes out there, but I'm sticking with what I know. This is Windsor and Newton Galleria Matte Varnish. I like this matte varnish as it's actually matte. A lot of matte varnishes are more satin, which is no good. And that's satin and not matte. Then using my trusty airbrush, which I believe is an Iwata Eclipse, I've yet to try a harder in steam deck or anything like that, I applied a few thin coats of the matte varnish. This took a fair bit of time as I wanted to make sure I got this right. I didn't want any glossy bits showing up afterwards. Oh, I'm sorry about my airbrush potato camera. Now my airbrush has a 0.3 needle, or is it a 0.03? I can never remember. But I'm starting to hear that most experts in the industry use a 0.4 needle to prevent blockages and the like. So next time I get another airbrush, I might have to get hold of one of those. I think you could even buy just the needles, maybe. I might look at one of those Cult of Paint airbrushes. I'm tempted to have a go with one of those next. Anyone out there got any experience with those? So this is what the Marines look like after a matte varnish. I was very happy at this stage, as I could see the end was in sight. It's just a few details to paint now, right? Surely there's only a few hours remaining. Well, let's find out. So next up, we had to finish those DIY chapter logos. I used a little bit of white paint to paint some blood drips onto the hearts. We still don't have a name for these guys, but I think I'm leaning towards the Sanguine Hearts or Bleeding Hearts. If you have any suggestions for names, then please let us all know in the comments below. Some of the blood drips needed some cleaning up due to my freehand skills being rather basic. Is there a course I can take somewhere to improve it? That might be next on my list. To clean them up, I just went back to the red we used on the red areas. I think it was called Vermilion Red, and that's something to do with worms, apparently. Now, there's always something freeing about freehanding, which is always fun. In future, I'd like to try a lot more of it, but I'm always unsure as to how to implement it. Marine logos are very small, so maybe like a big chapter logo on the side of a vehicle or something, that might be the best way to try it. Something like that to scratch the itch. So here is my finished chapter logo. It's very simple, isn't it? It's just a heart with a blood drop on. 
Some say it looks a bit like Care Bears and they're not happy about it, but I think it's quite cool myself. It's quite similar to the Lamentas logo, isn't it? And who doesn't like the Lamentas? A fair bit of time was spent painting these little drips onto all 40 marines, and in future I think I would try to source a little white drip decal. So if any of you guys know where to find some of those, then please let me know, as it will save me a lot of work. Maybe that's another reason to attempt to make my own decals in future. Now next up, I grabbed some white paint. I'm still using this Vallejo model colour white for this, as it's a little thicker than the Pro Acryl I finally managed to get my hands on. We'll be using this for chipping. Now, as I'm a silly billy, I didn't film me making my chipping contraption. It was just a small piece of foam torn up and put inside a pair of reverse tweezers. Honestly, reverse tweezers are brilliant. I thoroughly recommend a pair of those for your hobby box. So using the contraption I just explained, I then proceeded to add some chipping to the miniature. We do this now as else we might chip the wrong colours on the wrong bits. White chips on black bolt gun casings, for example, wouldn't look right. I then use this interesting brown colour. It's Vallejo Panzer Aces Dark Rust. It's a really nice colour for chipping that isn't black or white. I really recommend this one. Again, using my sponge chipping contraption, I then chipped all the marines with this colour. I tried my very best to not go overboard with it and any areas I over chipped with the white I then put this over the top to sort of blend them together. Now chips do look really good when you use more than one colour. Now if I was painting just a single space marine I would have painted all these chips with a brush for a little more control as opposed to just sponge chipping. But over 40 marines that was never going to happen, we didn't have time for things like that. Again a commission painter might choose to use the brush on every single chip on 40 marines but we're not commission painters and I feel sorry for them if they do have to do that. Okay, it's now time for the part that everybody hates, the blacking in. To black in, I like to use a black paint. In this instance, I'm using that Vallejo model colour black with the wrinkly label. I still don't know why they end up like this. So I then spent rather a long time blacking in the areas I wanted to paint different to the white armour. Now interestingly, this was actually quite therapeutic and my fears of doing this stage were swiftly removed as I settled in for the session. The time actually whizzed by, who knew? So here it is after the blacking in. I've blacked in the bolters, the piping parts in between the armour panels, some bits on the backpack and the chest cables. It's looking close to finished now isn't it? Marvellous! Now once we had blacked in the areas all we needed to, I felt we were getting close to the finish line. What's it taken like 12 months to get these done? Now the marines as individuals might look a little untidy, but altogether they were shaping up to look quite nice. I was very happy with my handiwork so far. What do you guys think? So here's a little twist. We are pulling out the grey. I hunted high and low for my pot of basalt grey but I couldn't find it anywhere so I've ended up using this instead. It's Vallejo model colour light grey. But is it too light? Let's find out. Using the light grey I then painted the bolter cases and the piping in between the armour. This might look really odd here but I did have a plan for this. Honest. Now, looking back, I could have probably just jumped straight in with the grey on the piping rather than going black first and then using grey over the top. Such is the beauty of hindsight, eh? Next up it's time to paint some metals. The metal paint I like to use to base my metals is Vallejo Model Air Gun Metal. I like the air paint version as it's a nice consistency. The normal ones just don't seem to thin down properly, but this stuff does. Using this metal paint, I then painted all the metal areas. This consisted of the bayonets, the weapon barrels, the key rings, and some details on the backpacks. Oh, also the teeth of the chain bayonets or anything like that. A nice easy stage. 
Here we can see the marine with all those base colours applied. We are now ready for the super secret next step. The step that will turn this mess into a masterpiece. Hopefully. Now when I say a mess, I use the term loosely. And when I say masterpiece, I also use the term loosely. Let's just say the next step ties things together nicely. So, I then took two contrast paints, some black Templar and some clear contrast medium, and mixed them together so the black wasn't as strong. I reckon I ended up going about 50-50 with this. I hear the Black Legion contrast paint is very good too. Does anyone know what the difference between them is? Now using that mix, I then slopped it on all those areas we just painted. The boulder, the metals, and of course, those grey piped areas. This left me some lovely shading in the recesses and tinted the grey much more towards black. This was a really fun stage to do indeed. With those grey bolters now looking black, I was very happy with how things were progressing. We actually don't have a lot more left to do now. Just some minor details really. So let's get cracking. I love the feeling of knowing you're nearing the end of a project. The feeling of completing something is fantastic. Now what I've taken from this experience is I need to work in smaller batches so I can have that feeling more often. Here's another nice brown paint I like. This one always reminds me of melted chocolate. It's Vallejo model colour Flat Earth. Not curved earth, flat earth. This one is also from a Panzer series, but it doesn't appear to be the same Panzer series. Weird. I used this brown to paint all of the leather straps on some of the bolters. I think there were around 10 of these in total, maybe less. Sadly, the brown didn't cover well over black, and I had to end up giving them around three coats, I think. That's one more than Duncan Rhodes suggests. There we go, it was eight. Eight bolter straps and a random sergeant. Not sure what he's doing in the leather group as he has none on him. Oh wait, yes he does. I painted the handle of his sword, but you can't see it from this angle. You can see from that previous shot that I also put some of those chapter logos on the legs of some of the Marines. Basically the sergeants and the squad leaders. When we were doing decals, I cut out a few more than I needed, so we had a few spare left over, and that's what I used them for. You can see that being done in this video here. Now here's a paint I haven't used in a long time. It's our old mate, Agrax Earthshade. Now I have to stress, this again is the old stuff. I think they've since replaced this with a new version, and I have to admit I don't know what the difference is, so if you know, then please let us all know in the comments below. Now the Agrax Earthshade was for washing all those leather bits from the previous stage. I wasn't too bothered about this, as there were so few of them in the batch. They won't be getting too much attention, so I don't want to spend too much time faffing with them. And when the wash was applied and dried, I called the leather bits done. At arm's length, they look fine to me. They won't be winning any golden demons, but we are getting things done, which is good, right? Now Peachy from the painting phase made a few good comments on this. You view them as a group rather than individuals. It's all about the spectacle. I'm not sure what this is. Also with so many miniatures, who's going to notice a few slapdashed areas? I feel we can get away with this one. Now this is a lovely colour, isn't it? It's Vallejo model colour light turquoise. Holding this one makes me want to start an Alpha Legion army, so we better get it out of the way ASP, as my old friend Carl would say. Yes, ASP, not ASAP. Using the light turquoise, I then paint the eyes. Covers quite well, so only one coat is required. And that's good because there's 80 eyes to paint. Aye aye. This stage went by pretty quickly, as there are only small areas. You can see that the eyes still need a little something else, as that flat turquoise just isn't enough. And as the eyes are a focal point, we don't want to skimp on that. But we also don't want to invest hours into them either. Now I once heard a rumour that if you paint the face of a miniature really well, you can get away with the rest of it being painted not so well. Have you heard of that one? Maybe that's another experiment for another day. 
So next on the list is a contrast paint, and the contrast paint of choice is this. Citadel colour Achelian Green, which my eyes read as blue. I literally see no green there whatsoever. Maybe it looks different when it's used. Hmm. Now using a teeny tiny brush, I then apply this to the eyes we just painted. Normally it's best to give it a bit of time to make sure the eyes are dry from before as we wouldn't want a mess happening. But again, as we've painted 80 of them, I'm pretty sure the first ones are ready. Try not to put too much of this on. You just want to sort of give the eyes a rim. And there we have it. It still looks dark blue to me. I'm not seeing any green. Is it my eyes? Is it my monitor? You decide. We just have one more step left to the eyes. So let's move on. Now I did actually consider doing glowing eyes on these space marines, but decided that's just a thing I'm going to leave to my night lords when I do those again, if I ever do those again. So let's grab one of my favourite white paints, Vallejo Model Colour White. It's a good white. Then using whatever method you can use to get the steadiest hand, we then dot the back corners of the eyes to give a visual hint at a reflection of sorts. I don't know how the hell I did it, but I managed to do it neatly with a camera in my face. I was rather impressed with myself, you know. And there we go. 40 marines, 80 eyes, and 80 little reflections. A couple in there may have a case of the wonky eyes, but at arm's length I can't see them, so I've already forgotten. Now that's the thing with tiny little mistakes. You remember them very well, and they can grate on your mind. But after you've painted a few more miniatures, you're able to completely forget about those tiny little mistakes and just see them as a whole. Time is a great healer, they say. Okay, so I need to paint some black parts, and as it's not detail black parts, I'm going to use scale 75 black. I really don't get on well with these paints, so they've been relegated to sub-duty now. You're about to see what I mean. After watering down that black paint, I then paint all the bases black. There's a lot of this to do, so you can see why I'm using this opportunity to use up the black paint I don't like. It's also only a base coat, so the finish isn't going to be too important. It is, however, important to try not to get any on the marine. That would be a pain to touch up and fix. After an hour or so, all the bases had a base coat of black on. I always thin my basing black paint a lot more to make it smoother to apply. Normally takes ages to dry, but as there's again so many marines, the paint was dry and ready for more work by the time I finished the last one. Now this is one of the benefits of the factory line system. When you work on just one miniature, you have to take into account drying times and things like that. A waste of time. And that can prevent progress, which sucks if you're feeling that you're on a roll. A bacon roll. Mmm, fancy a bacon roll now. So to start adding an urban look to the bases, we need a grey. And as this was the grey I had laying about, this was the grey I used. I still wanted my basalt grey, but it's still AWOL. Wherefore art thou basalt grey? Now using a dry brush, I gave the bases a heavy dry brush with this grey. I didn't really care if it was an overbrush or covered up too much black, as there's still a few steps left to help blend it all together. Oh, by the way, dry brushing is fun. Well, I think so anyway. Here's that white paint again. One of our best friends and greatest allies, Vallejo Model Color White. So only ever let me down once when the top exploded off as I squeezed it too hard when it clogged up. There's still paint on my drawers from that incident. Chest of drawers, that is, not my knickers. Now, I feel that's one of the only downsides to dropper bottles, isn't it? Occasionally, you get the old clogged tip. Now, if you get a clogged tip, don't go squeezing it too hard, or it might explode all over your knickers. If you wear knickers, that is. Nowadays, I like to go commando. All right, so using the white, we give the bases another dry brush. I try not to go too heavy this time and mainly concentrate on the edges around the rim. I don't get overly close to the marine, and it gives you a sort of shadow effect. If you do go overboard, don't worry too much. The next stages 
can fix it. So here's the 40 tactical marines with all that dry brushing done. Now the dry brushed bases and the grey rims look a bit of a mess and they all sort of blend together so we need to be sorting that out ASAP. Let's move on. So next up is some Nuln oil. You can see there's not a lot left in my pot so I hope I have enough here to finish all 40 bases. If we run out we'll figure something out. Wish me luck. Now again I have to stress this is the old style Nuln oil. It's since been reformulated for reasons unknown. I don't know what they changed or why they changed it, but I'm sure an expert will be along in the comments shortly to let us all know in the comments below. Come on experts, we want to hear from you. Using a nice big brush, I then slop the Nuln oil all over the base. This part is really good fun and you can just relax into it. Just try to make sure you don't miss any bits. Now it took the Nuln oil a while to dry and I actually left them overnight at this stage. But in the morning, they were ready for more white. Yes, it's the same white paint again. This time I dry brushed them even lighter than before and concentrate on just the outer edge of the rim to reinforce that shadow effect I spoke about before. It's hard to explain so I might have to make a specific video about it. Now if there are any specific videos that you would like to see me make at any point in the future then please by all means let me know. I'm always open to ideas. You can see here the results of all the dry brushing. I think it looks quite nice and there's lots of nice contrast in there. Some people say contrast is king. Some even say that contrast is more important than tidiness. What do you guys think? Alrighty then, so it's back to our good friend Scale 75 Black. This actually is the perfect paint for rimming as it's so matte. It's now time to begin rimming. Now when rimming, I always want it to be smooth and not rough, so a couple of thin coats is always best. By the time you've finished rimming the first Space Marines, they're dry and ready to have the second coat, so it goes by pretty quickly. Now after we've finished rimming 40 Space Marines, I believe our job is done. But before the grand unveiling, I would just like to say if you are enjoying this video then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you David. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. Alright then, let's see the results. So here they are, all 40 Mark VI Tactical Space Marines, all fully finished, rimmed and ready for the table. I think as a group they look fantastic and I'm very happy with how they turned out, even those free-handed shoulder pads. With the black rims applied to the bases, they also look great and contrast well with the grey urban rubble effect. I can't wait to get these on the table and into battle. Some fantastic work there. If you want to see some more videos in this Horus Heresy series, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.